Hello, today I'm in rural Kent, on the outskirts of Beekspawn, the village where controversial clergyman scientist Stephen Hales was born in 1677. Hales, being a grandson of MP Sir Robert Hales, had a privileged upbringing at Beekspawn. But after studying divinity at Cambridge, he stayed in Cambridgeshire, becoming deacon at Buckton. This allowed him to continue attending lectures at Cambridge, where he learnt about the microscopical studies of Maltigi and Gru into the anatomies of plants and animals. Hales was intrigued by their pictures, which showed pores and circulatory systems in animals and plants. But after six years at Buckton, he became parish priest at Teddington, just outside of London, and it was there where he began carrying out experiments on animals to find out more. For example, in one famous experiment, he measured the blood pressure of a horse by connecting a tube to its artery. As a result, he has been referred to as the father of hemodynamics, the study of blood flow, but he also gained notoriety for the cruelty of his experiments, which he carried out on live animals despite having misgivings. Several years later, however, he was in his garden on a spring day attending to a vine, and he noticed that sap was exuding from the cuts where he had pruned it. This made him realise that he could carry out similar experiments with vines that he had already done with animals. For example, in one experiment, he connected a vertical tube to a vine that had been cut near the root. In this way, he was able to observe sap rise to a height of several metres, but he also saw air bubbles rise in the sap, which prompted him to carry out other experiments. In one experiment, Hales cut a vine into two, connected the two pieces via a tube. In time, the air in the tube was replaced by sap, and Hales concluded from this that plants can release and absorb air. This led him to do other experiments where he heated animal, vegetable and mineral substances to see which would release gases. Some of these experiments, when studied decades later by other 18th century scientists, would result in important new discoveries. Thus, Joseph Black, in the 1750s, classified seashells and chalk as calcareous earths, and on heating them observed that they released a specific gas, now known to be carbon dioxide. Later, Carl Wilhelm Scheele heated potassium nitrate, then known as nitra, to obtain a gas that he called fire air and we know as oxygen. These discoveries, along with others, by Lavoisier, Cavendish and Priestley, for example, were important developments on the road to modern chemistry, and Hales had shown the way and even developed an apparatus to isolate gases underwater. The apparatus is now known as a pneumatic trough, and the 18th century scientists who studied gases, including Hales, are known as pneumatic chemists. Hales described his studies in two well-selling books, Vegetable Statics and Hemostatics, and he continued to investigate and write on other issues such as the development of ventilators for use in slave ships. By late in life he had become friends with royalty, including Frederick and Augusta, the Prince and Princess of Wales. After he died in 1761, Princess Augusta raised a monument to him in Westminster Abbey. Here, Hales is flanked by two figures representing religion and botany and crowned by a representation of a ventilator. His importance for the development of modern chemistry would only be recognised later. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment or perhaps even check out my book, Episodes in Chemistry from Philosophical Gold to Molecular Machines, available at Amazon. Thank you and I hope to see you again soon.